Juggalos and Juggalettes, this is your big homie Big Ian coming at you live and direct for FagoLovers.net. Once again, coming at you today with photographer Daniel Cronin, who has undertaken a an interesting project that we wanted to interview him about relating to the gathering of the Juggalos. Um, far be it from me to take away a synopsis or explanation of a, a heartfelt project from the artist who created it, so I'm going to hand over the floor to Daniel here for a few minutes. Daniel, tell us a little bit about the, the book you've put together about the gathering of the Juggalos. Hey, um, yeah, so it's, um, it's a photo book that comprises... Is comprised of uh, photos taken over the last three years at the gathering, between 2010 and 2012. Um, I was in Portland, Oregon, and um, have traveled out to Cave and Rock the last three years and um, shot photos out there with a bunch of you. Um, hopefully some of you are listening. Um, but, yeah, it's basically I kind of... So I, I, I went to college in Northern California at Sonoma State University, got into photography there, studied photography. Um, I moved to Portland and was kind of really stuck with photography, not really going anywhere. And I was looking for a new kind of project or something to focus on. And um, I was walking in downtown Portland and I saw that there, were, there was a Twisted show later that night outside at this venue and there was already 100 plus jugglers hanging out at like one in the afternoon, uh, you know, hanging out, having a good time, chanting family and everything. And I was like, man, that's, that's pretty interesting. Those, those people roll deep and they show up early and, you know, there's not a lot of fans that, that do that anymore. And so about three months later, I saw that ICP was coming to town on the Happy Days tour and uh, I showed up at the parking lot outside the venue um, about four hours before the show and hung out and talked to some jugglers and took about 20 photos. Um, and there I met a guy named Dave who uh, was like, yeah, man, you should like come out to the gathering and do this. And so I kind of started researching a little bit and whether I could swing it financially and with time. And uh, I got such a good response from the photos outside the, the venue in Portland. Um, I went out to the gathering by myself, didn't really know what to expect in 2010, um, and kind of just, in some ways, was definitely overwhelmed by everything, as I think even a lot of first-timers are, you know, it's just like, wow, like, everything's so loud and bright, and, uh, you know, when I showed up, I wasn't really sure how I was going to shoot the project. Um, I know... I had seen plenty of photos of jugglos, juggalettes partying, being pretty crazy and everything, and they weren't very, they felt very snapshotty to me, and, you know, you'd see them on blogs and things like that, kind of mocking the gathering and juggalo culture, and so I kind of decided to try and take a, a different approach to it and really kind of approach people and sit down and talk with them, tell them how I, where I'm coming from, my background, and I, I definitely kind of grew up in more of a punk, the Bay Area punk rock scene um, and things like that, and I, I definitely see a lot of similarities between Juggalos and punks in the sense that they're very tight-knit, they're somewhat outcasted by the rest of society, they're very, it's kind of based around music, um, fairly anti-authoritarian, um, and also very DIY, you know, like there's this spirit of creativity through music um, that kind of unites the two cultures. And so my goal was kind of to try and portray Juggalos in, in, in a, just in a fair light, you know, that I wanted to make photographs that I hadn't seen made out at the gathering. And, um, and when I would sit and talk with people before I took their photographs and just explain, like, I, I think you guys have qualities that people don't know about and that a lot of punks know, you know, know about, but they still talk shit about you guys or whatever. And so, um, in a way, I, I'm, I guess, ultimately trying to show that, you know, the gathering, while there is, you know, some wild and crazy and fun times that happen out there, there's a lot of these, like, quieter hangout moments that happen about like more about community and you know 
friendship and not to get all you know sentimental here, but um, those are worth focusing on. And um, yeah, and so it's, yeah, I went out three years in a row. The first year I was a little. I don't want to say intimidated, but taken didn't back. know what I was getting into. Yeah, and taken it back, and definitely the first two days, and then the third and fourth days kind of, like, started hitting my stride. The second and third year, I, like, knew how to handle it and just had a lot of fun, and it was really good seeing people I had shot the previous years, like, coming back up to me and saying hey and recognizing me and things like that, and... uh I, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, like, at this point, I, I tell people, like, I, I actually really enjoy going out there, like, the, like, people, you know, I think a lot of people's gripes with ICP instantly is, is the music, they don't like the music, and I'm like, well, you can say what you will want about the music, but, like, there's, all, they also curate this entirely amazing set of other acts, like, more, you know, like, it's like, I fucking saw Ice Cube, you know, that was like my, you know, one of my, and Naughty by Nature, like my childhood hip-hop dreams that I never thought I would actually get to see, um, and so, it's, I don't know, I don't know, it's, uh, I tell people if I was a juggalo, I would go to this every year, and I don't necessarily refer to myself as a juggalo at this point, but I definitely... It's on my list of things to do every summer at this point. So the obvious question being, will you be there this year? Uh, I am. I, I I want to. I'm going to try and make it work. I uh, my cousin, who's like my, uh, one of my other, he's like a brother to me, is getting married, and I'm a groomsman in his wedding in Seattle. And his wedding's on the tenth. So what I'm going to try and do is come out a few days early, hang out for the first day or two, and then fly straight to. <laughs> fly straight to Seattle for the wedding. Um, so I'm, I'm, it's definitely something I still want to do. It just sucks that this wedding's the exact same week or weekend, you know. Now let's focus back on the book a little bit more. So now okay. you, you're a photographer, and from what we've seen, this book is primarily comprised of a collection of you know high-quality, touching, good photographs that have taken place at the gathering over the last few years. Is that all it is, is, is just photos, or is there actually like a story or, or you know text content in this book as well? Yeah, so um, there is some text. Uh, it's one Camille Dodero... Um, wrote the intro to it and I met Camille um, in 2010 we were both out there um, the first for the first time and she's sub- sub- subsequently gone the last three years as well she wrote this really great piece from an outsider's perspective in the village voice that year um, and so she was gracious enough to write the forward to this book and so she actually has, like, interviewed a lot of the folks that I shot photos of. So in her intro, she's able to kind of, like, call out and talk about specific people in the book, um, uh, which is pretty great. Other than that, there there isn't, like, a, a thread or a storyline through the, the, the photographs so much. Um, but, yeah, there's the, the forward. I do a short intro about kind of how I got into... Um, exploring uh, the gathering, and then there's the photos, and then a thank you or acknowledgement at the end. Where I definitely, in the acknowledgements, um, the first people I acknowledge is I, I, I just want to say this is like thank you to the juggalos and juggalettes who, you know, it's like without them letting me take their photo or being so gracious to me, um, this whole book wouldn't exist at all so um thank you to those who let me take your photo and i I call you out in the book and i just want to say thank you how would you describe this book does it kind of fall into like a coffee table book category okay yeah i mean it's it's weird because this is my first book and it's it's people always think of you know coffee table books as these kind of fine art items that you, they sit there and you flip through them, and they're big and they're heavy. This, I mean, it's a it's a hardbound book. It's printed nicely. It's 
well put design and put together. I, I'd, I'd like to say, but I don't. I I see it more as if you kind of like a long form documentary project that is in a book. It's not. I, I think there's some kind of hang up, or at least I have a hang up with the term coffee table book because it, it it makes it sound a little more detached. I, I'd really like. It, it seems more of the, that the photos were taken from some sort of kind of outsider perspective, which I am, but I do think Juggalos would enjoy this book as a piece of their their culture, or their history, or just even like a pure document of the last three years at the gathering. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't I don't know if that explains it. Um, well, enough. Now, obviously, one of the most important things we want to touch on is where and how can people get their hands on this book? Okay, yeah. Um, so, that's, it, there's a few places you can get it. Obviously, Amazon.com is selling it, and there's, it, it's supposed to be a $39.95 book, right? Which, um, is, I know, I realize it's a little steep. I didn't get to set the price or anything like that, but that's kind of the going price for a nice photo book. Amazon's selling it for cheaper. You can buy it through them. I would also encourage people go to their local bookstores and see if they can order it for you. Support support them. Um, they might even have it in there. Um, you could also buy it from my website where directly... Um, I, I'm only shipping in the U.S. right now, which is kind of a bummer, but um, if you're living in the U.S. and you want to get it, I'm... I'm selling it for the, the $40 because I have to buy them back from the publisher and all this. And um, if you buy it from me, I, it helps me support myself a little bit more. Um, but just pick up a copy where you can. Um, I know Amazon's not releasing them until the, the 25th of April. I have copies available now. Um, and I've heard that it is in, already in some bookstores now. Um, as well. As far as, I don't know names of specific bookstores, but, uh, I don't know. And, and something we probably should have brought up earlier is, what's the title of this book? Oh, uh, it's, it's called The Gathering of the Juggalos. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's psychopathic. Was, we're actually gracious enough to let us use the, the full title um, for, for the book. Um, and there's also a great photo of Jay and Shaggy in there too. I got to meet them at the end of last year's festival and take their photo, um, and I actually showed them some of, some of the photos that I had taken the previous years. And then in there, they were pretty stoked on it and really liked the photos. And uh, yeah. A last question I got for you, man. Like, do you have any plans for like what your next project will be? Yeah. So I have. It's going to be. <laughs> Everyone keeps asking me that, and I, I don't know how I'm going to kind of outdo the gathering because it is, I think it is such a unique and interesting thing to, to shoot. But um, there is a fundamentalist Christian theme park in Florida called the Holy Land Experience that um, just seems pretty interesting. And so I'm debating about either somehow saving some money to fly out to Florida to maybe try and shoot that or this idea popped into my head the other night is just a, a, a photo series about people about uh, pizza delivery folks I've never seen an in-depth photo series about people who deliver pizza and I think they're like a, I, I like to use photography as a, a means to kind of show things that everyone kind of knows about or are in front of everyone, but um, kind of take a closer look or, like, look at it from a different angle. And so I just kind of envision all these awesome night shots of, you know, 17-year-old kid driving a shitty car out in the parking lot at night in this pizza delivery uniform, and it's just, like, a nice portrait of them and a series on that. Um, so, yeah, that's... I don't, I don't know necessarily where I'm going to go next, but those are two of the ideas that I have floating around in my head. 
which are pretty different, but yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I wish you luck in your, you know, your future projects, man, and definitely, you know, keep us posted as they come together. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you, the interest in the book and doing this interview and, um, yeah, I will hopefully see you guys back out there this summer. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Juggalos and Juggalettes, until next time, this has been Dan Cronin and Big Ian. We're out. Later.